All right, so let's see how we can do some downloads and get some images downloaded using Puppeteer. So I'm just gonna go to an individual product page to start with, like this one. And let's try to get to this page and download this image. So let's just copy this link. Here, I'm gonna create a new file. Let's go get some starter puppeteer stuff. And I'm not gonna use the control key here. I don't need most of this. And basically all of this too. So just some basic starting point. I'm gonna just take this hyperlink for that page and put it right in here and get rid of this. Now that's gonna take us to that page. Now on that page, we need to find the picture and we need to get the link to that picture, the hyperlink. So let's try to see how we're gonna find the picture. See, there's this thumbnail and then we have this item active and then we have the image. So let's try to use that and try to get the link. So item and active are on the same element here. All right, so to get to that, we're gonna do the page. And here we're gonna use this eval with a single dollar sign because there's just one picture we're looking for. And we need to do the selector here. So that's gonna be thumbnail. And then there was item active. So a space between here and no space between here because this is the same element. And we wanna find the image. So that should give us a callback function and it's gonna be a one-liner. So let's just keep that simple. I'm just gonna do image and we'll do an arrow function here and we need to get the source of that image, which we should be able to do by doing this. So let's try to save this in a variable and try to log this to see if that works. Just like this. So let's try to run this download image.js file. Let's see what happened in the background. See, that gives us a hyperlink back there. Let me close this. Now let's try to open this hyperlink and make sure that actually goes to where it needs to go. And as you can see, that links to the actual image. So now that we have an image link, we're gonna download that image using Node. And to do that, I'm gonna use the script that I've created for downloading in Node. And I'm not gonna go over this again. I will just link to the video where I explain this code. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to make this a module. So I have this downloader.js file where I have all of this code. Now in here, I have this download file function. I want to be able to call that in that other file that I have. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna export this function download file. So we'll make module exports and we'll call this download. And that will be this download file function. So to make this less confusing, let's just call this function download like this. And this will be download too then. But the export we're doing is gonna be called download right here. Now, because of this export, we should be able to import this downloader.js file in this new, where is the file? This one, let me close the rest. So I'm going to do that import here too. So I'll name that downloader, will require that file. So that file is located, this downloader.js in the same folder. So dot, 
and this, and then we have the downloader. And we don't need to do the JS part. Just like this. Now, because we have this downloader imported, that should have the export coming from here that's called download, which should basically refer to this function. So what I'll do here, I'll just do downloader dot download. See that pops up right there. And here we're gonna pass that image URL as one of the options. And the second one is gonna be a function callback what to do after the download is over. Basically, we'll just do a console log and say download complete. And here we can also get the actual name of the file. And let's use that too. So we'll do download complete four and we'll concatenate the file name after this. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this console log for the URL of the image. And I am going to probably remove this console log for done. We don't need that. We have our callback that will handle that. And the rest I'm gonna leave as is. So let's try to run this and see what happens. Now, this is an HTTP link. We were using HTTPS module. I'm gonna have to check and see if HTTPS is gonna be able to handle HTTP links too. And if it's not, we're gonna have to take care of that. But for now, let's try to run this same file and see what happens. So that went to the page. It seems like we have some sort of error. See, the HTTP is not supported, expected HTTPS. Yep, that's what I feared. So what we should be able to do is basically instead of HTTPS, HTTP, now we should probably improve this to check if it's HTTP or HTTPS and use the appropriate call in here, depending on the URL that's passed. So for that, let's actually use the URL module here. And here we need to actually get this. So now we should be able to do this with this. We're gonna have this URL. So out of that URL, let's just create the URL. So I'm gonna do a new URL. We're gonna use this constructor and that's gonna take a string. And that string is gonna be basically the URL string that we're passing here to the function. Now on this, we should be able to get the protocol, which basically should give us HTTP or HTTPS. So let's just comment this for a second here. So let's just try to console lock this to see what happens. Before we go too far, we want to make sure this works. So I'm going to save this, go back and rerun this. See, that gives us HTTP colon. And the other one should probably give us HTTPS colon. All right, so now we should be able to use an if statement to figure out what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go back to this. And basically, if this equals to HTTP, then we need to use HTTP package, not HTTPS. So let's actually go on top here and import HTTP2. And here we'll say request caller, some name, probably not the best name, but that's fine. We're gonna make it equal to, so we're gonna check if that is HTTP, the protocol, in that case, we want to use this HTTP. Otherwise, we're gonna use HTTPS. And then, let's uncomment this. Here, below, when we're calling this, we're gonna use this request caller, which is gonna be either HTTP or HTTPS, depending on 
which protocol we have. So let's try to save this and see if this works. With these changes, so I'm gonna go back to this image download file and try to rerun this thing and see what happens. So it says download complete for that. So I'm gonna close this and let's go check if the image is actually a proper image. See, there's the file that was downloaded. I'm gonna try to open that. And there it is, that's our image file. So we were able to actually download that image and it's here in our folder. Now, because we have so many files here, I'm gonna create a folder here, call it images. And from now on, I'm gonna try to download to that folder instead of downloading to the main folder. Right now, we're just downloading to the current folder. And that's something we don't actually support right now in our downloader, because right now in our downloader, I believe we always just save to the current directory. See when we do the file name here. So we need to be able to also pass the directory where we're trying to place this in addition to just the name of the file. So we already have the path imported. So what I'm gonna do instead of here doing the file name, I'm going to use path resolve. And here we have different parts of the path we need to basically piece together. So one is gonna be that file name. But before the file name, we need the actual path to the file. And that file path we're gonna do as a parameter here. We may need to pass an object instead of a URL, but for now, I'm just gonna do this. The URL, the file path, and the callback. So now when we're using this, we're gonna have to pass this file path to the function. So right now, see, we have this image URL. Now we have another parameter here, which should be the file path. Now that should basically point to this images folder in the current folder. So to do that, I'm going to import path here too. And we're gonna use that same path resolve here when we're sending this. Maybe we should do this before this entire thing. Yeah, let's actually do that. Let's just create a variable here and we'll just do path.resolve. And here we'll basically have to pass the current directory. And in the current directory, we're gonna have this images folder, which is this one right here. So that should create this file path. And we're gonna pass it here as that file path. And then we're gonna use that resolve again here to take the file path and add the file name to it. And hopefully that will take care of our problem. So now let's try to save this and try to run this. And hopefully if it goes well, we should see the image downloaded in this images folder. So I'm gonna save this, rerun this thing. So it's saying download complete. Let's go check it out. In our images folder, we have our image, very good. Okay, so now we have this. So finally, what I want to do next, I want to now go to this main page and download all of these images on this page for all of this, what seems to be books. So I'll just keep this separate. I'll make another file. And I will just copy all this code so we're gonna go to the main page. Once we go to that page, we need to find all the links. Instead of one link, we're gonna have a bunch of links. So this is not gonna be the same anymore. So let's see how we're gonna find the image links. So this is gonna be, see, there is this product, whatever this is, and then we have the thumbnail class, I guess that should be good enough. Let's just check another example here to make sure it's the same.
There it is. Again, thumbnail class inside of this. I think that's enough. So what I'll do here, it's going to be similar to the line above. Only instead of one URL, we're going to be getting a lot of URLs. And therefore, we're going to use not the single dollar sign eval, but the two dollar sign eval. And here, we're going to get our selector. So that seems to point to the image, this thumbnail. So we need a callback function. Let's just keep this with arrow functions, I guess. So I'm going to take all the images. We're going to again do a callback function on this. So we're going to take that and we're going to map through it. And that's going to be a list of images. So therefore we're mapping. And for each image, we want to return the source of the image. So if all of this goes well, this should be a list of images. So let's just verify that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this line. And I'm also going to comment this line out for now, the download part. Let's just make sure this actually returns a list of images before we go any further. So let's run this file. All right, let's look in the background. That seems to be accurate. We got a list of images. So now we need to download all these images. So let's comment this out. So basically, we have this image URLs. And what we're going to do, we're going to run a for each loop. And for each image URL, let's actually call it image URL, just like this. We're going to do an arrow function here. And we'll just move this right inside of this loop. And each URL is going to be this image URL. We're going to pass it to this function. The file path is going to be the same for all of them. So let's try this and see what happens with this for each loop. So it seems like it says download completed for all of those files. We need to check to make sure they are actually good. So these are thumbnails. These are smaller pictures. But as you can see, we seem to have all of them in this images folder. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.